Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. If you've been hanging around my YouTube channel at all, you know I'm a giant, giant fan of Query Store. And if you go by my blog, um, you'll notice a gazillion Query Store entries. And if you go and look at my Query Tuning book or my book on execution plans, Query Store features prominently. I'm digging Query Store. And so I also teach Query Store quite a lot. Um, I, when I'm doing presentations and stuff around the world, I do query store presentations, and the best thing about them is I get a lot of questions. I love questions. By the way, if you have questions, post them down below. I would love to hear them because questions give me videos and blog posts and ensure that I'm constantly learning along with you guys. So, query store, question. Can you force a parallel plan? Let's find out. So what we have here is a query. Uh, the query itself is pretty straightforward. I'm pulling a couple of columns from two tables um, based on a you know, simple where clause, nothing complex. The trick I'm doing is, is I've got the DVCC trace on and trace off for trace flag 8649. Now trace flag 8649 is a fairly undocumented trace flag, but what it does is sets the cost threshold for parallelism down to zero so that you get parallelism when it's enabled. Um, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, there's a great blog article by uh, Paul White, and I will put a link down to that in down in the comments. Um, so you can follow that up if you want to. But anyway, what I've got is a very simple query. Now, if we turn on the execution plan and run it, this query results in this simple execution plan. And nested loops join a couple of clustered index seeks. Now, the overall cost of the plan is very low. The... Um, estimated cost. Where is it? There it is. 0 0.00635. I mean, it's very small. So 0 0.00635 estimated cost is well below the cost threshold. Even if I've just got things set to five, um, the default, I'm not going to get a parallel plan. However, if I run it with the DBCC trace, execute it and capture the execution plan, then we get a parallel execution plan. Okay, cool. Straight, very straightforward. There is a way to generate an ex, a parallel plan. Awesome. Now, the question is, can we then force one plan or the other? Okay, well, let's find out. First thing we're going to do is I want to just pull the information out of Query Store. I happen to know the query ID is 251. Otherwise, I would have to go and look up what the query ID is. But I, I'd trace that down earlier. And so I'm just going to do this because it's quick and easy and the results are, are very accurate. So I, I'm only getting information for the given query. I'm not getting other stuff in, that makes things messy. Now I've got the query ID and the plan ID, and this is the important bit. I need to have both of these to force the plan. So let's take a look at, that's the parallel plan. So we don't need to save it. And that is the non-parallel plan. Okay, cool. So now we know that for query ID 251, the plan ID 261 is the parallel plan. So then we can force the execution plan. Plan force successfully. Okay, great. Now, just because the plan force successfully doesn't mean it will actually force. So let's go back here and we have to re execute the query. If I just display an estimated plan, Let's do that just to see what happens. We don't get the parallel plan. And the reason for that is, is because you actually need to recompile this stuff. And it hasn't recompiled yet, so it's still looking at that non-parallel plan. But let's execute it. And ta-da! Oops, I'm sorry, I executed that badly. Let's execute it without the DVCC trace, and ta-da, we now have the parallel plan. Now, one thing to take a look at is the properties, and if you go over here, there's a property that gets added, and it says use plan true. Now, that property would not be there if we, you know, we're not forcing the plan. You, you don't see a use plan false. There's either a use plan true or no use plan at all. But so this is, in fact, forcing a parallel plan. So it's pretty simple uh, answer to the question. Can you force a parallel plan? Yes. That's it. 
So it's just um, a question of um, making sure that you've got that stuff set up and you can force it. Obviously, you can also force it the other way. If you want it to be um, a non-parallel plan, you could do that. Now let's go ahead and turn off plan forcing. And again, let me just show it to you because we should see, if I look at the estimated plan, I ought to see the forced plan because it's, again, it's, it's using what's out there in inside cache. But if we then run this query, because we've disabled the plan forcing, executing the query again is going to cause a recompile. And when the recompile is done, take a look at the execution plan and we've gone back to the other execution plan. So that's how it works. Cool, so hit the like, hit the subscribe, don't run away. Clearly, as long as a plan is valid, and it has to be a valid plan, you can force a parallel plan on you know, a query that may not have gone parallel otherwise. So it does work. That's pretty easy to explain. It, the whole key here, the key is to remember that plans must be valid in order to force them. Uh, you cannot force invalid plans. I mean, it, it makes sense, but it's something that if, you, if you're not thinking about it, you'll lose track. So remember, valid plan can be forced. That's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.